infallibility is not known by the external appearance. You can't identify whether somebody is an infallible imam by their external appearance, how they look or how they dress. But rather, infallibility, an infallible imam is only identified by him being mentioned, his name being written or foretold. That is the only way that you know if he's an imam or not an imam, if he's infallible or not infallible. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد إلا ما المهدينا وسلم تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brother and companion جافد الغني بالله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته dear father good to have you here thank you for having me here so uh, today is going to be a little bit of a different uh, type of episode uh, you brought to my attention uh, today this clip uh, that is of a scholar and the scholar is talking to his viewers and uh, he has a YouTube channel as far as I understand that has something like 2.5 uh, million subscribers. Um, I doubt that he accumulated those subscribers in a legit way. Everybody knows uh, these days that people uh, sell used uh, YouTube channels and then they just change the names to it. And a lot of these scholars are known for uh, doing things like this in order that they may uh, kind of appear like they have uh, lots of followers when in fact uh, they don't. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, because of the fact that he does have this channel with so many followers and he is stating uh, that uh, this Tao is false and attacking me, uh, let's hear what he has to say and let's respond, shall we? But we're not going to be responding to him today. Uh, because there's nothing that we can say or do uh, that will change this individual's mind. Um, this person has already made up his mind, uh, but rather what we're going to do is we're going to respond to him in order that we may uh, highlight his argumentation for why it is that I am false and uh, offer me the opportunity uh, to respond and we let the viewers decide, shall we? Yes. Okay, let's start. Let's hear what he has to say. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إخواني ظهر هذا الشخص منذ تقريب سبعة أشهر وهو يدعي بأنه الإمام المهدي المنتظر عليه سلام الله. Alright, so the first thing is that he says um, this man there's no power nor might except for Allah. This man appeared uh, seven months ago and uh, he's claiming that he is. Uh, the promised Mahdi. Uh, if the scholar means that I am claiming to be the 12th Imam, uh, Imam al Mahdi, because he's a 12 or Shia, mm -hmm. Imam Muhammad ibn Hassan al Askari, salam, well, first off, that's absolutely not what I'm claiming. What it is that he's saying is that. Um, that I'm claiming to be the promised Mahdi. And I just wanted to correct yeah. for everybody, um, you know, because if he means that I'm yeah. claiming to be the 12th Imam, then automatically right off the bat, he has lied. Yeah. And if he has lied in one thing, then he can lie in all things. All right, let's continue, shall we? أخذ يتلو بخطابه بين الحضور طبعا الحاضرات نساء سافرات ووراء صور تظهر نساء سافرات وحكي المهم فهو من كلامه من كلامه يشبه مئة بالمئة كلام اليمانيين وخصوصا في تلاوة صلواتهم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الأئمة والمهديين وسلم تسليما مثل ما يقولون so then uh, the scholar proceeds to state that I was giving a speech and I was giving a speech to an audience of people um, that were uh, immoral. Uh, there were women in there that were uncovered, that were naked, so to speak, that were, and he's referring to the fact that they were not wearing um, the headdress. Obviously he's referring to women in the audience and he's uh, referring also to 
perhaps some of the images, um, you know, the paintings that were on the wall in which they are, uh, the, it depicts a certain saints and a holy woman who have come uh, throughout uh, human history that were not wearing uh, head veils or headdresses. And I'm not sure why a respectable scholar would attack the, um, the people that are in the audience who are there to listen. I mean, let's assume that I am uh, a misguided individual and that these people are uh, fooled by me. Why is it the case that they deserve to be attacked? What point um, does that prove nothing, but he seeks to just kind of uh, discredit me. And then he says that uh, our our way of uh, saying the salawat, saying the uh, peace, sending peace and blessings upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, because we add on there the imams and the mahdis, he says, well, this makes me think that they are an offshoot or part of the followers of the uh, Yemeni, which in that, in that aspect, uh, it is true. It's strange that you have these scholars who straight away, like you said, mentioned attack attack the innocent people and the their what would be perceived the congregation. And how can someone justify that to call people they don't know lewd and immoral when they when these guys are supposed to be guiding the yeah, well, in, in, in regards to this Sheikh, you see, because the, the Twelver Shia, uh, they, they have something um, which is called uh, muta marriage. Yes. And uh, for them, uh, and it's very well known in Iran and in these countries, uh, that uh, muta marriage is, is kind of this uh, temporary marriage whereby an individual can go to a scholar like that, he can pay him uh, some money, a couple hundred dollars or whatever it is, uh, the currency of their country or the rate that it's going at. And uh, he can establish a temporary marriage contract between him and a girl. And sometimes people don't know where to get these girls for temporary marriage. And so they'll just call the sheikh and he has, uh, you know, he's in contact with, um, you know, uh, women that uh, are covered. Do they wear the hijab or they wear the khimar? And uh, then under an Islamic umbrella, um, a religious uh, title, so to speak, uh, he will take money from the male and he will uh, make a temporary marriage contract. He'll marry them to each other uh, for a certain time period. It's usually like an hour or two or three or maybe a day or two, um, whereby the man can enjoy uh, the female in a sexual manner. And so for the scholar, uh, that's totally okay. Um, there's no problem in that. Uh, these are decent, good uh, women. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is an in, uh, indecent thing if a woman, if a woman uh, is listening to a lecture but uh, does not wear a headdress or a head veil. Uh, for that's uh, that's uh, his view on things, and it's okay. Let's continue and see what it is that he has to say further than that. قلت وأنه ادعى الإيمان بأنه الإيمان المهدي وتلا وصية قال أنها وصية رسول الله لأمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام ودعا الناس إلى حاكمية الله كما هم شعارهم الحكم الله والبيعة لله وهذه المسائل فأخذ الناس يسألون عنه عن طريق الاتصال عن طريق المراسلة ويقولون شيخ نبين So yeah, so he says that uh, basically I uh, read for the will of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and I was calling the people towards the supremacy of Allah and he says that this is uh, our mo motto uh, so to speak um, the the call to the supremacy of God and, and the implication, the way that he's saying it, he's saying, and this is their motto, the supremacy of God, uh, which would indicate that it's not his motto or not part of his religion. So um, it seems that the the sheikh, the scholar, uh, does not believe in, in the fact that only God can appoint the ruler and nobody else is... Uh, allowed to do so and that's a little bit problematic because it's kind of like the uh, the fundamental core belief in all of Shia Islam that's why they branch off 
from the mainstream Islam is because mainstream Islam believes that other people that are not appointed by God can uh, end up being the rulers, and that's why they followed Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, uh, the um, uh, Umayyad, uh, the Bani Umayyad uh, caliphs, and also the Bani Abbas, whereby the Shia said no. All these years they said that uh, nobody can appoint the ruler except for God, and that's why they held on tight to those who were appointed um, in the will. Uh, those 12 Imams actually in the same will that I, that I read um and uh, and the mahdi's after that um and then he says that uh, after the video came out of my speech many people contacted him and they were asking him to clarify uh, my matter and so he felt obviously that it was a religious obligation uh, i'm out there making these statements and he's getting so many phone calls so many uh, emails uh, asking him you know what is his thoughts about me? And so now he's getting ready to share his thoughts. Let's hear what he has to say. Khwani abayin hasa wadaita baad ma kathura su'alu an ujaddadan. Ikhwani ta'alamun annahu mundu ghaybat al-imam al-yom Allah hada bahar al-kathir 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 mimman yadda'i mimman yadda'i imma sifarat al-imam an-aw annahu al-imam al-mahdi alayhi salam marra yitla' alak shab مرة يطلع لك شايب مرة يطلع لك مسودا مرة يطلع لك عاقل مرة يطلع لنا أشكال الناس وأشكال البشر الذين ادعوا أنهم الإمام المهدي عليه السلام يعني القضية مو جديدة القضية أبدا مو جديدة ونحن نعلم إخواني اللي, اللي يريد يعرف ما تنطلع لي هاي هاي المسائل أو بالعراق نسميها الكلاوات حتى ما تنطلي على هاي الخدع والخزعبلات والكلاوات أنه عليه أن يدرس قضية الإمام المهدي عليه السلام ويعرف من هو المهدي هو أشبه الناس شمائلا بصفات جده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله Okay, so uh, there uh, he begins to say that basically this is nothing new um, this happens all the time uh, all the time there's somebody who's popping out of nowhere claiming to be uh, an ambassador of Imam al-Mahdi or a representative of Imam al-Mahdi or Imam al-Mahdi himself. He's like one day, you know, you'll, you'll have somebody who's an old man popping up to claim it. Sometimes one day you'll have somebody who's young that's popping up uh, claiming to uh, be that. So, so this is nothing new, people, um, you know, and anybody who uh, knows and has studied uh, the the uh, case of Imam al-Mahdi, you know, is not going to be deceived by uh, these types of trickery and deceit. So basically what the scholar is saying is that the existence of false claimants throughout time uh, means that this claim is also false. Uh, well, by that type of logic, then there's never going to be a true Imam Mahdi that's going to come out because uh, Imam Mahdi has to come out at some at some point in time. And because all these false people came out beforehand, uh, he will definitely come out after them. And uh, if 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 I'm automatically dismissed. Uh, because of this this argumentation, well, then uh, Imam Mahdi also would would uh, the same thing. He would be dismissed because of the existence of false claimants, and that's uh, that's an unfortunate and illogical uh, argumentation that w we wouldn't expect would come out of somebody who uh, allegedly had spent so many years uh, in the Hausa studying the hadith of the Ahl Bayt salam and uh, you know earned uh, the ability to wear that uh, turban uh, in fact uh, you know throughout history javed uh, there were many people that claimed to be false prophets in fact um, jesus uh, he emphasizes in the new testament about the coming of false prophets uh, after him he describes them as wolves in uh, sheep's clothing. And indeed, uh, he warns the people not to follow them. Um, and after him, there does appear over and over and over and over and over again uh, throughout the uh, centuries that follow uh, Jesus Christ, people that were claiming to be the return of Jesus himself. 
or claiming to be uh, the Messiah of Judaism or claiming to be a new uh, prophet. And uh, if we if we take the logic of this and the argumenta- line of argumentation of this scholar, then we would also have to dismiss the Prophet Muhammad uh, because the Prophet Muhammad is a man who appears, who claims to be a prophet after a long line of false prophets. So um, what, what is then what is the fault on the Christian who rejects the Prophet Muhammad and says, well, Jesus uh, said, beware of false prophets. Many false prophets appeared uh, after that. And so anybody who's familiar with the case of uh, Jesus knows already that um, you know that this type of trickery and deception will exist, and therefore, uh, you know, automatically, uh, Prophet Muhammad is false. It is a disaster um, that uh, somebody like that would make the types of claims and come to the type of conclusion that he's coming to, uh, because it leads people astray. And just like Jesus said about the Pharisees and the rabbis, um, it is people like this today that are actually making their followers more worthy of hellfire than they are and turning, breeding, uh, uh, brainwashing and educating a generation of people who uh, might not be as literate as he is, uh, he's turning them into into trolls and and people who want to kill and fight uh, the true Mahdi. I was just noticed, Father, he didn't dismiss the will. He just brushed it off. He didn't say straight away. So does that mean he acknowledges that there is a will in their books? Or, or is he just... I mean, like you said, Javed, I mean, it is it would be, at the end of the day in his books. Yes. So how could he dismiss it? Um, let's, let's, let's listen further. Let's, let's give him more chance. Maybe he's going to come back and kind of clarify his position. Let's see. ويظهر وعمره بالثلاثينات وتعلمون أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله معروفة شمائله عن طريق الكثير من الكتب كما أنه عليه السلام إذا ظهر يظهر في مكة وتمتد دعوته إلى المدينة وإلى الكوفة وإلى الكوفة وأنه لا يختلف عليه إثنان أبدا Okay, so this is, wow, this is incredible what he says now He says, this guy actually says that it is known, the case of the Mahdi is known, he's going to appear in his 30s. Well, uh, well, I I actually started um, the, the calling of the people towards the Mahdi uh, when I was 32, and there are narrations that state specifically that a Mahdi uh, appears at the age of 32. So if we're talking about age, uh, I already matched that. And so he can't really use that as an argumentation. And But that's not the disaster. Uh, the disaster is what he says after that. He says that the Mahdi appears in Mecca and his da'wah uh, reaches Medina and then it reaches Kufa in Iraq, and he says, and no two people will ever differ concerning him. So what does this mean? This means that he is stating that the Mahdi will not have any enemies at all, or nobody that will ever belie him. The moment that he appears, he makes his claim, and he's making it in Mecca, and then all of a sudden, all those people that hear his claim, all those people that see him, nobody differs. Everybody says, that is the Mahdi, and then the news reaches all the way to Medina. Medina believes that he is the Mahdi because no two people differ, and then somehow it skips over to Iraq, maybe by means of a phone call, or something like that, and then everybody in Kufa agree, and then once Mecca, Medina, Kufa, they all agree, because there's no two people that are disagreeing, the rest of the world agrees that uh, he is the Mahdi. And so he is now belied 
Muhammad and the family of Muhammad on in, in hundreds of narrations, if not thousands of narrations uh, that explicitly state that the Mahdi comes forward and he makes his call and then Iblis uh, makes a call after Gabriel's call and the people become confused. And uh, the narrations that state that the Mahdi has an enemy, which is the Sufyanian. There's many people that are following the Sufyanian that the Mahdi, um, you know, he has enemies from the scholars, that the scholars are the first people to oppose him and fight against him and that he must slaughter uh, many of them uh, between Najaf and Kufa and other uh, places uh, in Iraq and and that it is the uh, the Shia that actually come out and say uh, go home O son of Fatima we have no uh, need for you and the narrations that state that the entire world gathers to fight against the Mahdi and uh, the narrations that state that the uh, companions of the Mahdi, they, they run away from him. And the, and the narrations that state that the uh, Shia are even not at peace uh, and, and death does not come to the Mahdi until the, the hearts of the Shia are at peace, that he is neither a Dajjal, Antichrist, nor is he a devil, a shaitan. Uh, that's how much they differ in regards to uh, the Mahdi and how much doubt they have and how much enemies uh, the Mahdi has. So how is it that no two people would, um, would differ in regards to the Mahdi? I mean, what this scholar is saying, he is literally, literally saying the exact same thing that many Jewish rabbis say about the Messiah when they're arguing that Jesus is a false Messiah and a liar and a false claimant. They say that the true Messiah will come and nobody in the world is going to uh, deny him or be able to differ in, in regards to him and that uh, he will, um, you know, he will bring peace instantly across the planet without um, you know, spilling any blood. So uh, now, uh, unfortunately, we're left with, with one of two uh, conclusions that we must draw from the words of the scholar. Either the scholar uh, is intentionally lying uh, to mislead people uh, and to discredit me. And so he is, it's okay for him to tell a lie. Um, and he knows that he's telling a lie. But he's just doing it anyway so that, uh, so that he can gain views on YouTube, uh, which is a disaster. Or uh, he actually doesn't know. Uh, he doesn't know the narrations or he forgot uh, the narrations or he himself is unfamiliar with uh, what Muhammad and the family of Muhammad said about uh, the Mahdi. And, and that is uh, a disaster as well. Uh, let's let's carry on and see what this guy has to say. إذا ظهر سلام الله عليه فيظهر أمره جليا لا اختلاف فيه مو يطلع وين قلت مكة مو يطلع في فرنسا مدرب أمريكا مدرب سان فرا فرانسيسكو ما الله ما أعرف وين طالع هو هذا ويخطب بالوادم. So and then he says that uh, you know and that he appears in Mecca. He's stressing on this. He appears in Mecca. He appears in Mecca. He appears in Mecca. He doesn't pop out from France or San Francisco or whatever, wherever it is that uh, this guy is appearing or speaking from. Um, I'm not speaking from France, uh, nor am I speaking from San Francisco. Um, I'm actually speaking from the UK. Uh, that's, uh, that's where I gave my speech from. And once again, I reiterate, I am not even claiming uh, to be the 12th Imam Muhammad ibn Hassan al Askari whom they believe it is the 12th Imam, Imam al-Mahdi, who appears first uh, in, in Mecca. Uh, so really what it is that he's even saying to disprove me is irrelevant because the character that they believe appears in Mecca is not even me, nor am, am I claiming to be that character. وهاي الملابس الغربية التي يلبسها عجمية وغريبة عن لبس العرب ولبس محمد وآل محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم أجمعين. Okay. 
So then he starts attacking um, my physical appearance and he says that a further proof uh, why it is that I'm false is because of the strange Western styled clothing uh, that I am wearing. It is not the clothing of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, uh, peace be upon them. I don't even know what to say, Javed. I don't even know how uh, this scholar can respect himself at this point or how anybody can even respect what it is that he's saying. Uh, every prophet and messenger uh, it is clearly stated and it's known uh, that they would appear to their people wearing the clothing of the time of their people. Uh, he says that my clothing is the clothing that is strange, when in actuality uh, it is his clothing uh, that is strange and it's unfamiliar and it's alien looking to the people of the time and also to the majority of the population that uh, live on the planet. And if you kind of examine what he's actually trying to say, he's painting a picture uh, for the viewers, uh, whereby through his argumentation, he is stating um, in a hidden way, uh, in a thinly veiled way, that the Mahdi, in order to be the Mahdi, has to look like he's looking. They have to wear clothing like he is wearing. And he's saying that this is the clothing um, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu even though there is no narration that states that the Mahdi comes forward wearing the same clothing that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu uh, is wearing. And furthermore, there's a narration that says uh, from Ali Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam, uh, and it was narrated by Muhammad al-Bakr and Jafar al-Sadiq and Musa Qazim that the, there is not an imam that comes from us except that he's infallible. And then it says, and infallibility is not known by the external appearance. You can't identify whether somebody is an infallible imam by their external appearance, how they look or how they dress but rather infallibility. An infallible imam is only identified by him being mentioned, his name being written or foretold. That is the only way that you know if he's an imam or not an imam, if he's infallible or not infallible. And so uh, it's not me who is now belying the sheikh, it is, uh, Muhammad and the family of Muhammad who are outright calling this man a liar. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's definitely he's definitely uh, using um, physical appearance to try to attack um, to attack my character, and uh, he's trying to do it in a, a semi-comedic uh, way, in a way that would incite people. Uh, to mock and dismiss. And he's not just doing it in a speech, but if you look here in the bottom, uh, what's written in Arabic, uh, it says, uh, the appearance of a young man, the appearance of a youth, uh, a cute youth, it says there, cute. It, it, literally, it spells <laughs> out in Arabic uh, the English word cute. Zuhur Shab Qut Yadai Bainahu al Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. The appearance of a cute young man who's claiming that he is uh, Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam. He says cute. His what he what he actually is intending to do is to discredit um, me. Uh, he means by cute that I am not a real man. Uh, like him or like Imam Mahdi alayhi salam will be. Now this is this is what he means by cute. So he's actually using it as a a form of uh, of insult. And uh, uh, even though I haven't insulted him, uh, he attacks uh, the way that I look, and um, he attacks uh, my clothing. Uh, so it's all good. But I guess these. 
um, this type of method only reflects on uh, the individual. Uh, him uh, using these tactics, I believe that they only uh, show how weak he is uh, intellectually, and uh, it further exposes, um, you know, his immaturity and exposes the fact that this individual should never um, be speaking in the name of of religion, and uh, it should make people think and wonder and contemplate. Uh, for themselves when they uh, envision, uh, when they look at his face. I hope they put his face on the, on the screen here and people remember everything that this man said and they ask themselves, uh, you know, uh, is, this, is this a face of one of the people of paradise? Are these the words of somebody who is calling people uh, towards heaven? Or is this one of those imams of misguidance? Is this an individual who, um, you know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa forewarned us about and said that they are the most evil of creation? Is this an individual who is a liar and who leads people astray, a wolf in sheep's clothing, an idol who doesn't benefit nor harm, and who wears and dresses the, in the costume of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, seeking to deceive and to fool people? Is, uh, is he resembling uh, somebody who uh, they want to trust to their hereafter with? Or does he resemble uh, one of the, uh, the apes and the monkeys uh, um, that were seen by the Prophet in his vision jumping on his platform. And I don't mean by that that he resembles a monkey or an ape. Um, uh, uh, in his physical exterior appearance, but I mean by uh, the way that he is uh, behaving and acting, uh, making sounds on the platform uh, uh, that and grumbling in ways that don't make sense. Let's continue. كما أن الذي يظهر لا بد له من آيات وبراهين ومعاجز حتى ليبين للناس أنه صاحب الدعوة الإلهية وأنه إذا ظهر يملأها عدلا وقسطا بعدما ملئ الظلم الوجورة أنت طلعت أنت الشاب الكيوت شنو إنجازاتك إنجازاتك أنك تطلع على التلفزيون وتتعلم لك تشمح شاية أمام نساء سافرات أمام نساء سافرات Okay, so now here, here he's saying that, like, you know, uh, in order to prove yourself, you have to have miracles. Um, you know, what have you done? What have you done? He says, what, that you appeared on TV or you uh, memorized a couple words and you speak in front of a bunch of uh, immoral women? Um, you know, what are, what are your accomplishments or uh, your achievements? Well, um, I appreciate the question. And uh, to answer him on what my accomplishments or achievements are, one, I have uh, claimed to be in the will of the Prophet Muhammad yes. I came to the people and said my name was written in the will of the Prophet Muhammad. I came with a letter of appointment in the same way that Muhammad came and he said I was mentioned by the prophet Jesus in the same way that Jesus said I was mentioned my name was mentioned in uh, the on the tongue of Isaiah and in your scripture the apparent scriptures that you have uh, between your hands so that's what Muhammad and Jesus did they didn't come and say we were mentioned in a hidden text or or they said we our names are mentioned uh, you know, uh, by them, but, you know, the words got lost. No, they came with the apparent scripture. You know, Muhammad says, I'm the comforter who was promised by Jesus. Jesus says, here I am, mentioned by Isaiah. Um, and the same is true for me. I say, hey, here, just as the narration state that he, uh, the, the, the Mahdi's name is mentioned in the apparent will, the will which is in the hands of the people. I say in your books, my name is mentioned, Abdullah, in the will of Rasulullah. So that's my first accomplishment. Uh, second accomplishment is that I wrote a book called The Goal of the Wise, and I've been uh, uh, basically preaching, holding lectures, um, speaking uh, for a while now with all of you. 
and uh, doing it uh, in a public uh, manner right now and I've displayed uh, the knowledge which I have gained from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from Muhammad and the family of Muhammad and I put it in between the hands of the people it's a book that's almost 700 pages I put it in English and I put it in Arabic uh, published in English and in Arabic and I have uh, touched on many different topics in that book and and I have put it forward uh, in order that the people may evaluate uh, the knowledge that I come with and see if it is something which is divine or not and decide for themselves uh, that's my second accomplishment my third accomplishment is that I have uh, raised the banner of allegiance and supremacy is to God and that is something that the Prophet Muhammad did, uh, Imam Ali did and every other prophet and messenger from Adam's time until now they all called towards the supremacy of God that only God can appoint the ruler and I have done the same uh, here is a picture of myself raising the black banner physically and uh, since 2015 I have been calling people towards the supremacy of God. In addition to that, I've told people to uh, make istikhara about me and there have been hundreds of people, thousands of people around the world that have all made istikhara and asked God, God, we believe that you do not misguide a sincere servant. Tell us, is this dawah true or not? And they make the istikhara and every time they've testified uh, that the istikhara told them that this path is true. And we see the same thing happening in the hadith where one of the companions of Imam al rida after the passing of Musa Qasim is unsure if Imam al rida is a true Imam or not. So he says, I made an istikhara and uh, it showed me that uh, he was the truth and so I believed. And it's a verifiable method of determining uh, you know if somebody is a hujjah or not it's acceptable because it's mentioned in the narrations and because people have used it uh, to determine um, in terms of miracles uh, you know I, I I don't even really want to mention them but what I what I what I can say is that um, that there are many people in the community and people who have known me and been around me uh, over these past years in the Tao who they themselves have claimed and testified to have experienced a multitude of miracles with me, uh, miracles that range from uh, healing the blind all the way onto um, you know the very uh, disappearance of the moon itself and a whole lot of other miracles uh, in between and uh, those miracles were uh, documented broadcast on uh, chasing a miracle uh, and uh, you know on our satellite station uh, that we had and it was a a show whereby um, uh, Sarah Batul, God bless her, and uh, James Pollard, uh, a, a British Ansari who believed in this call, uh, they went around and they interviewed uh, the people and uh, told their the stories and, and uh, basically preserved the accounts of those who experienced uh, the uh, miracles and uh, testified to that. Um, in terms of the, so that's another accomplishment another accomplishment is dreams um, there's many people who came into this call after seeing dreams of Muhammad and the family of Muhammad or the prophets and the messengers saying that uh, this path was the true path or seeing me in visions alongside uh, with Imam al-Mahdi so Muhammad and the family of Muhammad God Almighty they testify to the fact that I'm telling the truth uh, in the kingdoms of the heavens, the Malakut, the dream world, and uh, the istikharas have come back positive, the miracles are present, uh, the law of knowing, the proof of God uh, through the will, through the banner, through the knowledge, it's all fulfilled, the criteria is fulfilled, um, and, you know, has been fulfilled by myself as, uh, has, as it has been fulfilled by every other uh, prophet and messenger that's ever came before uh, and there were even uh, you know some prophets and messengers uh, that didn't have any miracles at all uh, actually um, 
and uh, we have examples of these uh, prophets and, and messengers that came and um, they called people towards God, but they didn't display a, a miracle, so to speak, like Hosea or uh, like, um, you know, uh, uh, John the Baptist or uh, like Seth or so many other prophets and messengers that came before. And so by his logic, uh, the absence of miracles uh, in the lives of these prophets and messengers um, would invalidate uh, their claim. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, at least we have people that have testified uh, in this call. Let's carry on. يا أخي هو نفسه يكذب نفسه نفسه يكذب نفسه فإخواني سوف يدعي من بعد هذا الكثير من المدعين الذين سوف يدعون بهتانا وزورا أنهم الإمام المهدي أو أنهم سفراء من وأن هذا الأمر لن يتوقف حتى يظهر الإمام عليه السلام فثبتوا أركان عقيدتكم وأيمانك وأيمانكم لألا تزل قدم بعد ثبوتها وأن القابض على دينه في هذه الأيام كالقابض على جمرة بيده أو كخارط القتاد نسأل الله لنا ولكم حسن الخاتمة لا تنسون والدي من خالص دعائكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Yeah, he basically, he says, uh, okay, people, so uh, in, in summary, this guy is belying his own self. Um, you know, it doesn't even need any more further proof. Like, he is a proof of his own uh, lies and the fact that he's a liar. And, uh, you know, then he says, like, you know, yeah, let's just all, uh, you know, know that many other liars are going to come after him until the appearance of the Mahdi. And uh, basically make dua for me, guys. Uh, let's all hold on to our religion, um, you know, as if we're holding on to a, um, you know, a uh, piece of coal or ember that's burning. And uh, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's, and then he makes dua, basically, that, that, that God grants him and everybody else, like, a, a good ending. And then he says, make dua for me. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I'm not sure how or what it is that belies me. I mean, because he literally said nothing. This guy came out uh, and his feeble attempt to, to discredit me consisted of basically, uh, you know, the argumentation that there's other false uh, people that have claimed it before. So therefore I'm false and that my clothing also is like weird and Western and, uh, you know, for that reason, yeah, you know, I'm false. And because I'm uh, giving a speech from somewhere like San Francisco uh, or France, then also I'm false. And because uh, the women are not wearing hijab and he attacks them. So therefore, um, it is false. Uh, as far as the hijab thing goes, we already made like a full speech about that. So I don't even want to get into it again. People can watch it on the channel and they'll know that hijab was not part of any commandment that ever came down or any jurisprudence that ever came down from God, uh, whether it was with Muhammad, whether it was Jesus, whether it was, Mo was, whether it was with Moses. But even uh, if it was, it's not appropriate for him at his age and in his position uh, and with that uh, turban that he has uh, sitting on top of his head uh, to insult uh, people uh, who are, uh, whom he's perceiving to be sinners. Uh, as Jesus said, uh, let he who is without sin uh, cast the first stone. And certainly, um, you know, if this man only reflected uh, about his own lies uh, and his own self, uh, he would not have uh, time to worry about whether or not the decent, good, pure, um, holy women uh, that were present on that day are wearing the head veil or not. Uh, he should have been more concerned about uh, the claims that I was making and prepared better before he came out uh, with this video. Um, but there it is. There's the case of a scholar uh, who is uh, misguiding his people and uh, who doesn't know anything about religion. And I hope that this video, if anything, serves as a warning uh, that people yeah. should never follow the likes of uh, these wolves in sheep's clothing uh, because these are the imams of hellfire 
Um, and uh, these are uh, literally uh, those whom are blind leaders that will destroy uh, your soul, um, you know, and lead you to a place of eternal damnation if you follow them. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to protect us from the greatest fitna uh, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa warned us of, the fitna that's greater than the Dajjal and the armies of Yazid, son of Muawiyah, and that is the fitna of the non-working scholars. From them the fitna came out and to them uh, it shall return. And Lanatullah upon the Zalimin, the liars and the oppressors and those who are wrongdoers. Uh, thank you so much, Javed. Thank you, Father, for having me. It, this opportunity, it's so dangerous for people to follow their scholars blindly. They have usurped, they've taken over the job of the Imams. Uh, they've built a multi-billion dollar uh, business out of this, uh, you know, this this religion thing, and and so uh, the appearance of the Mahdi himself is the biggest threat because when he comes, their empire uh, collapses uh, because the 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 farm owner comes back and he wants to reclaim now his sheep, uh, but they don't want to hand over the sheep, uh, you know, because the sheep pay them, they make money off the sheep, and uh, and they slaughter the sheep and they don't have the best interest uh, of the sheep in mind, and so they would never hand over the sheep back to uh, Imam al-Mahdi. Imam al-Mahdi is going to have to fight them uh, for that. And so let this be the uh, first uh, strike of the sword today. And uh, let us, um, you know, let us reclaim back uh, and free the people from the grasps uh, of these non-working uh, evil scholars and uh, let them revolt against them. Uh, let them, uh, you know, Never listen to them again. Thank you, Javed. Thank you, Father.